Hey, everybody. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Today, I'm really excited. We have an awesome guest on. We had a couple people uh, shout, shout this person out, so I'm excited to bring her on in a little bit and talk a little bit about marketing with you guys. We have Kristen Shea, uh, so I'll be excited to bring her on. So get your questions ready. We're back. Um, so we have Kristen Shea coming on. A lot of advisors already watching her content. Has a great following, a lot of fun videos. Uh, she's doing something a little bit different now, so I let her speak on whatever she wants to speak on. Um, but whether or not she's in stealth mode, she actually is here, and she's gonna be answering a lot of your guys' questions. So get them into the comments below. I know we have a lot of people who are excited to ask them, so get them in and we'll try to answer as many as we can obviously with the time we have. So I'll go ahead and bring on our guest. Welcome, Kristen. Hey everybody, happy Wednesday. Good morning. I actually have a special guest with me as well. Come here. Um, All right. Needs, well, okay, I'm driving her. She doesn't like me. <laughs> Come here, you love this. Um, oh, it's so nice. What kind Come of dog? Here. No. <laughs> She's a Samoyed. Um, oh, wow. They call them uh, smiling Sammies because they have this part of their mouth from, I don't know, Siberia or whatever that uh, is supposed to keep their drool from freezing. So they always look like they're smiling. It's <laughs> A plus dogs, 10 out of 10. <laughs> that's awesome. Anything better than a dog by itself is a dog who can't stop smiling. So that's awesome. Uh, right. Yeah, Nick was right. Nick, Nick called this out before. I saw this in a comment where you guys were going back and forth and uh, yeah. he was right. So. Congratulations, right. Nick. You also know dogs. A um, couple good mornings. Good morning from Mario. How's it going, man? How are you? Good morning, early, Mario. Jonathan. How are you? Hey, stranger. And Mr. Sean Moran. Hi, right. Kristen. Good, to see, good to see you again. How's it going, Sean? You can see these comments too, right, Kristen? Yeah, I can. Okay, good. Um, so, oh, awesome. I didn't know that. Well, why would I? That's great, Nick. Cool. So we have a little bit of an outline, I think, Corey. Um, obviously, I want to answer your guys' questions, but let's get going with some of the topics so we can at least generate some conversation around, and then we'll start. Uh, hey, what's up, Charles? Then we'll start. Um, we'll start answering questions as everybody gets in. Charles is awesome. I like Charles. We just we've just been speaking a lot recently over the last couple of months. Uh, so he's a great guy, another good person to connect with, and shares a lot of really great uh, technical information on LinkedIn about where the markets are going. It has some great insight as, as he is a CFA. So cool guy to follow as well. Yeah. So one of the things that I think, um, like aside from having you on, Kristen, you're, you're, you're bright, you're, you're fun, you're energetic, you bring a lot of energy and, and creativity to the, to, to just financial services, marketing in general. Um, and one of the things that Ryan and I always try to do is what can we do by having a guest on here that provides value back to the community? And when I think about that, I, I go back to when I first found you kind of in the feed, right? In the LinkedIn feed and what caught my attention, um, your, your style, the way you marketed, the way you put videos out. And what I'd love to know is, you know, you don't just appear on the scene and do that. Right. So like, how did you get there? How did, how did that, um, give us a little background of, of kind of like your, let me, let me pause. You're building something really cool right now, right. That you're really excited about. If you rewind, how did you get to where you're at? Like just briefly. Yeah, um, I guess I just posted a video about this right before I went into stealth mode, but um, basically was over college, um, got recruited out of a restaurant um, by my mentors in the business, a gentleman named Tom Kessler, where I was waiting tables in school, had changed majors a thousand times, always studied psychology, human studies. They asked me to take a survey, didn't know much except, which of course was like a sales aptitude test. Didn't know much except for that they were nice people and they tipped well and I owed a lot of money to the IRS with waitressing taxes and was over college and uh, took a leap of faith, ended up in financial services. The last place I ever 
imagined I would end up. And you know, the way that they tell you that you'll be successful as an annuity wholesaler is to basically make a hundred thousand cold calls a day. And as a millennial, right, um, in what you catch on to very quickly is can is a kind of old school industry. Um, I said there has to be another way. So I would one day a week because you don't have didn't have anything to lose. I would just play around on LinkedIn. There wasn't really much of a strategy, it, but it mostly consisted of me searching for independent advisors, sending them messages, which while the messages, I I think they'd still work today in general, the messaging sales thing doesn't really work, but it works back then um, because not everybody was super spammer. And then it evolved into me writing blogs for our company website and attaching a quick video to it, posting about it on LinkedIn, saying, well, let's eliminate a step for the viewer and let's eliminate the reading. And then it evolved into videos, um, social, it's, and then, well, social media is kind of like, it's not like a quick result thing. You know, you're like pushing this boulder uphill for a while and then it'll start to spiral down onto the other side. And once it starts rolling, you can't really stop it, but it takes a lot of time and you have to let go of your metrics. You know, if I do this, if I spend X amount of time, will I get, you know, will I get X amount out of it? Like you can with traditional marketing ways. Um, so it probably took like two, two years of pushing that snowball uphill, but now it's on the other side where it's rolling and it's hard to stop. And, you know, it evolves into the other platforms um, as well, which has been fun. What gave you the permission? Like, because Ryan and I talk about this all the time and, and so many people watching right now, I know feel similar, like finance has such a conservative, um, you know, especially finance and LinkedIn have such a conservative appeal or uh, history to them. What gave you that initial permission to just bust out and be that authentic Kristen and, and share that personality that you have? That's a really fun question. And uh, one of the ways that I operate, which sometimes is really great, I think in this scenario it was, but it also gets me in a lot of trouble is not asking for permission. It's doing things and apologizing afterwards if I have to. Um, very high on the quick start on the Colby, like between a one and 10, I'm a nine. So I'm not the person that really thinks about things really deeply. I, I hear something and I just I can't help myself take action on it. I don't know. I mean, it did get me in trouble. There were things I should have asked for permission for, but. Um, you you know, I mean, permission, like in, in theory, like what gave you that confidence to say the hell with it? I'm me and I'm going to just go out there and be me. I don't think that comes externally. You know what I mean? I I don't know. World's never been big enough, I guess. I've, I've always kind of been fearless. I wish I could say, here, here is how I found it. But um, as it's probably a generational thing as well, just being somebody who grew up comfortable on social media and showing up often, authentically. You know, a lot of the people in our industry didn't grow up recording themselves and interacting socially online where, you know, every day after school, you'd come home and you're in like sixth grade and you'd be messaging and then it evolves into less messaging and more pictures. It's, it's a, I think it's a cultural thing, you know? That's a good point too. Cause now the norm is almost like uh, people dancing you know, for TikTok, like in the middle of a crowded store kind of thing. It's completely different. It's like on the other end. So yeah, everybody's getting really comfortable. I think with the camera in front of them, everybody just having that self-imposed actor style or lifestyle where they're just recording everything. But it's true. It's not something that everybody's used to. Have you guys done any of those dancing videos? Done I'm amazed at what's going on on TikTok. Like I'm trying to get my wife and I to do some of the funny shit that's taking place. Like I, I just don't want to like do it just to do it. But some of these people are doing such a great job, like husband and wife, like some of the things that are going on are so hilarious. Yeah. We're not Keith Wilson. No. Uh, or Anthony Rapolo. <laughs> um, yeah. I think, and that's like a great example of the generational thing. It's like, I'm not that far removed from it, but I look at that and I'm like, I don't know if I could do that, man. You know? When, when did you see your, like, I guess your potential or the fact that it was really working? You know, I know you said you were just kind of dabbling in LinkedIn. How long did it take you to kind of get some footing and for you to be able to look at your peers and be like, 
hey, this is actually working. Like you guys should, you should guys should think about doing this as well. Uh, um, it's crazy because like the things that I would say motivate me today are different than the things are, like are a lot bigger than the things that kept me motivated. I mean, anybody online, anybody who likes a post or comments on anything it is a potential relationship. Relationships are everything. It's not B2B or B2C, it's human to human. Um, so, you know, if I would get three likes on a post, you know, like it was like, yes, like I have three new people that I can ask what they're doing this weekend, you know, and then, and then you do it again because you're like, Ooh, I hope I connect with these same three people. And then, and then there are seven and you're like new friends, you know, and then, and then you, um, you know, I think there's also the part of it, which, which you don't talk about, which is the human part of me where people go online to get the dopamine and the serotonin releases in their brain that come from approval and, affirmation um, and connecting with other people. So I'm sure there was a part of it that was um, less, this, this is, this is, that was, that was just as much of this is working, but also um, there's probably like a chemical thing that was like, I have to keep doing this. This feels really good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does that make yeah, sense? I like that. Yeah, it does. I, I like that you bring that up too, because it's true. That's something it's not many people talk about. Um, and I think that is real, you know, and I think the same way we talk about Corey is like escapism and coming from social media outside of just to be educated on finance and things like that. It's like the release from the regular world, even on LinkedIn, where it feels more buttoned up and professional. People are still looking for that escape and, and looking for that exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting is that when people talk about like when people talk about their online strategy, which is what I know we came in looking to talk about today, what to post the algorithm being authentic. Um, that's really just a piece of it. The other piece of it, which is, which gives you, which gives you and others that dopamine and serotonin release that makes you feel good and is part of relationship building and um, having the, uh, the, I don't know if anybody can hear me. But from from me on my side. Sorry we if it is we have me. Kristen, hang on. I'm going to mute you, Ryan. Keep up. Oh, Kristen, you're there. Keep okay. going. Um, is that, it's not just about what you post, but just as much time as you spend saying, what am I going to talk about? And like, talking at people, you should be spending commenting on other people's stuff, liking their stuff, giving them the affirmation as well. Um, because, you know, one, it'll help you build stronger relationships and creates reciprocity. But two, um, makes gives you more loyal uh followers or connections, if you will, which I guess is reciprocity. Do you use LinkedIn as a, like, where are you in the stage of, of social media for your business? Do you use it like in for fun and still as the escapism tool? Or you, when you're in the feeds of the various platforms, are you in it for business purposes only? It depends, right? I, um, it depends. And LinkedIn is uh, LinkedIn. I've always been very strategic with because once you realize that you're onto something here, it's something that I'm I'm very careful with. Strategic, not in what I post, but strategic in how it's organized, when it goes up, what's included, what else it's connecting to. I started to create a personal account. So I create, I mean, a personal business account. So I made a personal business, Facebook, personal business, sure, Instagram. Sure. I had my like regular personal, like me, like at brunch or, you know, whatever. And then like the business showing up and I'm actually honestly having a really hard time with it right now because it's, it's human to human. And um, I, th I think I may delete those because I'm just finding, I'm not finding myself using it in the same way. I think this is going to, because, because Instagram and Facebook, if they're not, they're not where people go to do business first. It's where you go to be social and 
it, you know, I, it's not what you do first. So I think I'm actually going to scrap the ones that are business and more strategy oriented on every content, every platform except for this one. I think the hardest thing here is what you're uncovering is it's really hard to be in the same room. Like let's call Instagram a room or Facebook a room. It's hard to be in the same room and wear two different hats. You can't be two people in the same room. Yeah. You know, and like when we come to LinkedIn, we're wearing one hat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know. It just, I, I, I should know. When you're trying to post with I consistency, your, your brain starts to go like, should this go on personal or business? Because sometimes it right. can be a little bit more personal, but then you're saying, is this too personal? It goes here. And I think then you break it down and realize that, you know, business is, is like you said, Kristen, it's you and it's being a human. So uh, totally. I kind of like the idea of, of breaking that down and just bringing it back to the personal profiles. I've, I've been thinking about that myself as, the only reason I had to start a business one was because of LPL, but I can use my personal one, which I think uh, where, where everybody already finds me anyway. And I don't want to blast my friends and family, but you know, like you said, people aren't there for business, but it's, you know, so I don't know. I didn't find as much value in my business page as well. Yeah. The, what I've got a quote and then I've got a, a case study from an advisor. First of all, it's my favorite quote from Confucius. If you chase two rabbits at the same time, you're not going to catch any rabbits. So I, I, it's in practice for everything. The other one is if you look at um, not all of the advisors, but many of the advisors that I work with, we have synergies, right? So they're very focused on being authentic and being yourself and the H to H. Their, um, their, even their Facebook business pages are not the names of the entity, XYZ Financial Advisors. It is the advisor's name. So, it, because, and then you go back and you look at it, the research shows that I think it's, I wish I could quote it, so maybe I shouldn't give you the stat if I can't reference it, but I read just two weeks ago, consumers are 64% more likely to trust a message that comes from a person than something that comes from a company brand online. Um, something that I, so that's something I tell all my advisors and they, they never yell at me for it later to say, Throw your business out. I know you're very proud of it. You will talk about your business once you've connected and on a personal level. Yeah. Well, one of the things, and you've you've seen this on the wholesale side of the business, is the biggest thing that the wholesale side of the business makes is they pitch product 24-7. And then they realize that, well, I was wholesaling for XYZ company. Now I work at ABC company. And now I work at F, you know, FGH company. And it's like, when you start bouncing around, the product doesn't make, is not the sale anymore. It's you. It's always been you. And that's what the advisor buys. And that's what the client buys. The client buys the advisor, not the name behind the advisor. Yeah. So I had a mentor on, on this note. Um, her name is Lisa Jacobs. Um, she's one of the top, top I think, 9% of highest earning websites on the internet. She works at Highland, the company I just left now. And um, she, she taught me something very important um, early on as I was developing. So I did not get all of this for myself. I, I look to other people and the experts, but um, she, she taught me, to, and it makes a lot of sense that you should be rotating content between personal, right? Your per like your personal, your pictures of you with your family at your kid's soccer game, you know, your Halloween costumes, um, inspirational slash entertaining, right? So your inspirational quotes, your memes, you know, the pictures of the dogs or whatever, and then the business, right? People come for the personal, the entertaining, the inspirational. That's why people come on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And then if this is good, if it's authentic, then they'll stick around for the business stuff. But there is no, there is no part of anybody who, who signs up on social media to look at somebody who's constantly posting about business, 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 business. People yeah. do not go on Facebook or whatever to learn about the top 10 and most common uh, tax planning mistakes in 2020. They, they just don't do it. They go online to when they are on their lunch break, when they are waiting for dinner to be ready, when they're in bed and they're winding down, they do not go, they do not go there to read like really deep thesis is, you know what I mean? Like you're the expert, it's good that you're the expert, but think about it, if you were to have like ACL surgery, right? What would you be more likely to engage with? Some doctor that posted this, you know, even a three page article about the science of the surgery and the tendons and the molecules and the blood types that he would be considering during surgery, or would you be more likely to engage with 
you got to get that leg fixed. I know it sucks. That's the emotional point. Your knee's killing you. You deserve better. Here's what happens if you get it fixed. Here's what happens if you don't. You know, like that's that's, that's easy to digest more like more so than all of the other stuff, which I think um, advisors are really getting us really are set up for failure for because that's what the services that provide digital marketing solutions to advisors are giving them. Here's your FINRA approved canned content. It's, and then the advisor who wears 18 different hats can be like, okay, digital mar- social media FINRA approved content, it'll be posted in my sleep. There's a whole other thing, the links on the content that we can talk about. So, you know, check, but they don't get any likes. They don't get any engagement. And that part of it is, is part of yeah, for sure. Um, let me l- let me ask you the uh, like a pointed <laughs> question because I'm curious about this, Kristen. Talk to me about pandering. Like, are you like in your frame of mind? Like, I, I want to know, like, just person to person, are you willing to lose a client so that you don't pander to them? And what I mean is, someone comes to you and they want you to help them create something in a certain way or do something in a certain way, but it doesn't match the way you would do it, but you know, they would do business with you if you just agreed to, if you capitulated to what they wanted, are you willing to let a client walk away, not to pander to something that you actually just don't believe in? Absolutely. And I would take it a step further to say that I proactively um, on social media, push those people away by being authentic. Um, I'll give you an example. There was uh, the first the first post that started my snowball, right? I was, my hair was still wet, like just gotten out of the shower. I mean, like not like super wet, but damp, wearing a leather jacket, red lipstick. I told a story that was um, probably like not appropriate for LinkedIn. One of my coworkers came to me, a younger female, basically saying, how do I, how do I get, how do I deal with, the, the, some of these men that engage in inappropriate um, in conversations or, you know, whatever with me. Sure. Yeah. When I have to be nice to them and I want their business, how do you engage with it? And the best advice I could give her was you kind of get used to it. So I went to bed, woke up the next morning really pissed that that was the best advice I could give her. So I recorded a video and I told a story about a time I was at a conference with a bunch of men where they called me a hole. There was a trivia game and it was like, name a hole you can't get into. And somebody like 20 years, my senior in a leadership position pointed at me and said like this one. And that is, um, and that was one of those things where like, I didn't really think about it ahead of time, but afterwards you were like, what did I do? You know, cause I'm like asking for a little bit more respect for women in the industry. I'm asking for men in those situations to stand up. You know, there's a lot, there's probably a lot of people who see this and are going to be like, ah, oh, like, I can't believe she said that. This is a really strong opinion. I'm not comfortable with it. It was the first real live example of me pushing away the people that I don't jive with proactively and bringing the people that I connect with on a fundamental level closer to me, which I think is the the value of a niche, whether it's the way that you do business or your ethics or the way that you operate personally, connecting with those people. I would put that first and foremost so that you're not even on the radar of these people who are going to ask you to do things that you would never want to do. Yeah. I love that. Does that make sense? I like that too. Absolutely. percent. Yeah, definitely. Especially in your situation, which that it's hard to speak on just because it's, it just is, it's, it's annoying to hear, but you hear it a lot as I'm scrolling through my feed, it trickles through in terms of like, you know, a lot of women being objectified. So it's, it's an annoying thing that probably, especially being young was difficult for you coming up and breaking through. But it's part of the thing that also, like you said, that authenticity, authenticity pushes the wrong people away. Something that I've always believed in and what I tell people is the thing that people usually are afraid to post is the thing they should, because it may not even be as crazy as they think, but it usually draws the line in the sand of saying, this is who I am. And I think people resonate with that more. And that's always the fear of people putting out that content, excelling to that point. But that's really where you have to get to is the mindset of being comfortable with pushing people away. And that's really when I think you start attracting people. And it doesn't have to be like a big grand thing or a an inappropriate story. Like it's the little things that you can do. Like if you really like to wear Hawaiian shirts, like 
wear your Hawaiian shirts in on your social media and the way that you show up. Because if you want to wear Hawaiian shirts every single day, and then you have a client who like always expects you to be wearing the t- like a tuxedo and a top hat, like that client is going to be a pain in the butt. Like you're going to be like, oh my gosh, and it's gonna it's gonna perpetuate that. So little things are going, and the people that are cool with you wearing your Hawaiian shirts. They're going to be like, all right, I like this guy. And then and then you guys are going to have something that you can talk about and have in common because you both love Hawaiian shirts. It's a great branding idea, the Hawaiian shirt person. <laughs> There's go. a real estate agent in Virginia um, that wears a hat everywhere that she goes. And she's kind of like a legend where like apparently she sleeps in her hats. Like she, you, can, you do not see her anywhere without a hat. And Northern Virginia is a very populated area. Everybody knows who she is. It's that real estate agent with the hat. It's a it's a talk trigger. That's a really great book. Um, talk triggers by I think it's Jay Bauer uh, Bayer. Jay, I think it's Bayer. Uh, something different, but yeah, yeah, cool branding, right? That's really smart, and that's a commitment too. You really have to stick to something like that. I feel like, but if it's something you enjoy, then it's really easy. Maybe she had all those hats already and not something she had to go get. She was just like, what do I do with all my collection of hats? And she's like, now I know what to do. Wear them every single day. <laughs> every day. I'm, I already sleep in them. I might as well just keep them on. That's, that's probably something she was already doing. That's, awesome. um, that's great. So with, uh, with I guess, I, I, saw, I saw recently with your video that you said you broke your own rule um, and we can get into delegating, but you edited your own video uh, that you said in the comments. So one thing I saw that that was, it's a really well like edited video. Uh, um, I'm guessing, do you, like, what, what do you use? How long does it take you? And did you feel like you got good at it and then you handed it off? Or did you feel you were having struggle, struggling, making videos, it was taking too long? And then like, what got you to the delegation stage? Because it looks like obviously it takes up your time, but you're good at it. Um, what gets you to the delegation stage is when you start procrastinating on it, which was the quote that went along with that video was what if procrastinate from Dan Sullivan, what if procrastination was a form of wisdom? Um, I knew before I would do a video that it would probably take me two hours um, to get it done that I could have been doing other things. And also knowing that video was something that I needed to be doing, I would drag my feet and it wouldn't get done because I knew that it was going to be a pain in the butt. Um, But, you know, you have that like very stubborn period until you're willing to let go where you're like, I I can do it myself. I'm going to do it myself. Um, A lot of the tools out there make it so easy. Like I have no formal training. The app that there are two tools that I use. Um, One is uh, Clipscribe. That's the one that has the the subtitles um, and the the framing. Um, I think that's like or $12 a month. It's something really cheap. And then um, the other one I use for some of like the animations and the graphics is a tool called InShot, which is a free app. I think you pay like $2 a month if you want the water stamp, you know, the InShot like sticker taken off of it. But, and it's, it's just on my phone. It's not a desktop thing. So it's something I can just like do on the treadmill or whatever, not while I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> just um, the red lights just the red lights right i know <laughs> Kristen, um, i want to offer you a piece of just you know uh almost like gratitude or or, or just thanks um i have, have been paying attention to videos and, and how to do things and and there's so many people out there creating so many great videos um i'm doing and and we're starting to try to do everything we can to emulate the video style you have because i love the way you chop that thing up to get rid of all the micro moments of thinking and ums and ahs. And you, it's, it's straight to the point and I love it. And you can turn a seven minute video that says the exact same thing into three minutes and it's concise to the point. And it, in a, in a world, and I start speaking faster when I talk about it, because in a world when our attention is microseconds, you've figured out a way with that video style to hold it. 
you hit the nail you hit the nail on the head so it's called um so it's it's an editing style that's really popular on youtube it's called the jump cut editing and that's exactly what it is is when people are scrolling on social media they continue to scroll because they want that that stimulus your brain is addicted to it you keep uh you keep scrolling but when you have the jump cuts and the things popping up on your video you're you're creating that same response in your brain that same stimulus so they don't have to keep scrolling they're getting that like satisfaction in the same place it's um, brilliant i love it i love that one mario, of the things i like when we're talking to uh oh yeah here let me let me pull this up for mario since he had a question what was the subtitles and frame app if you don't it, mind again? uh clip scribe c l i p s c r i b e I'll put it in the comments here. What is uh... and that one's not an app. That one is um, that one is done in a browser. Um, so you would have to use the internet browser on your phone or the internet browser on the computer. Um, no S on the end of S. Clips, just clip, and then but then the in shot I N S H O T. That one is an app based, not web based. And I can follow up. Stetner, if we if, if any more of these apps and things come up, just post those in the comments for us. I don't know if I can right now, but no, I don't know. No, the other Kristen. We have a we have, I don't know if you can see other Kristen. We have um, a Kristen in the background. Oh yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> we have a video <laughs> he doesn't even know. That's what we were saying. We re we it's so funny because we referenced Kristen before, but we never told Kristen about Kristen. So she we yeah. all we were re we were just referencing like you knew. And now I now I realize you probably either didn't hear us or extremely confused. We have a marketing coordinator yeah. in the background. Hey Kristen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she she wait. Uh, that was fun. Um Cool. Yeah, I appreciate that. One of the things I love talking about when we get somebody on who I think everybody gets entertained by or grabs value from or, or thinks, you know, we talk about authenticity and there's a lot of high level stuff, but then it breaks down to something you say about jump cuts and you realize how strategic you are at the same time. And just like you said about how you post things when they connect to maybe what you're doing in the outside world, like marketing an event or something that I like to do also is something like building up this show. So telling you you're on it, putting it in the story, adding those clips. And that's at least like my version. I think, I think you do that really well. And it's something that, that helps people understand that obviously you have to be yourself. You just start posting about your family, but when you're getting down to it, the more you practice and learn, there really is a lot of strategy that can go into it and techniques that really do help you stand out rather than you just putting the phone in front of your face. But I think that stuff comes with time. If we, if we, I don't know how, I know this is a 30 minute show, but I could, I could give you guys like five things like right now that will, that are like more than half of it um, from a strategy perspective. Um, so LinkedIn has an algorithm. Okay. It's, uh, it's a set of rules on the back end of how, and every social media platform has one. The rules are a little bit different where they prioritize or basically uh, does it, they basically identify based on these qualities of the post, what they think is good content and what they're going to make sure a bunch of people see or what they're going or what they deem to be bad content. And they're essentially going to bury and make sure that nobody sees. Um, at a high level, the algorithm doesn't really change. There are, there are updates throughout the year and it, it sounds really complicated, but you can learn about how to beat the algorithm by going to just Googling LinkedIn algorithm or whatever on LinkedIn, there are the first process when you first thing that happens when you post a piece of content is it goes into three categories. Okay. Which is, um, one spam two low quality content or three high quality content, which means you're cleared. Okay. First and foremost, hang on, hang on. let me pause you real quick. Keith Wilson, this is the time to pay attention. All right. Keep going. Sorry. And by the way, Keith Wilson, I saw that you um, posted about the, um, the the lowering of video views recently on, on LinkedIn, how the videos aren't getting as many views. Um, I, I talked to somebody on the inside recently. I can tell you about, well, okay, I'll tell you now. Um, it was the reason why video views are down is because LinkedIn wants you to be sending messages. Um, the more messages that you're sending, it gives you... Um, it gives you a favor. Like it's like, all right, gold star for you. We'll make sure more people see your stuff. Make sure they see your stuff. So that way LinkedIn is saying, okay, these people are actually using 
this this platform for what they're supposed to be using for they're messaging other people and not just like talking at people we'll make sure people see what they have to say so Kristen, do you have somebody that you know that works there or used to work there i got friends of friends we're gonna get banned on linkedin live for talking linkedin <laughs> algorithm <laughs> Oh, no, really? No I, no, I have no idea. They do tell you not to talk about it. <laughs> they do? Why yeah, did you, you, well, they, I think they just don't want it to be overdone, you know, where the yeah. LinkedIn show about the LinkedIn salesman selling the LinkedIn course and you're kind of, it's just like so meta about people bringing it up. I think it's always a topic because so many people spend their time here and it's like a very active business platform. So it makes sense. But, you know, it, it's because also Facebook and, and Instagram, it's almost like there's nothing to talk about. You just have to pay to be there um, or you're engaging with people, you know, so. There's at least a conversation around LinkedIn. I don't want to get you kicked off. No, let's do this. It's huge. I want to learn about this. Okay. Um, okay. So, just <laughs> okay. Um, page one, they give you uh, content. Spam, low quality, high quality. First thing you want to do is make sure that you do not hit the spam category because nobody will see it. Um, one, no more than one external link. Two, do not tag more than five people. Those LinkedIn jail. Those those at fifty people, your spam. Like LinkedIn is saying, your spammer. Um, more than four hashtags, they're saying your spammer. Um, watching your grammar and uh, you're making sure that your spelling and your grammar is right is another thing that can say, I think this is spam. Um, now to get from the low quality content to the high quality content, that is a little bit harder. What's interesting is you would think that um, videos are the thing that um, the, the algorithm favors the most, which is what I actually thought. That was the reason why I posted so many videos was because I thought the algorithm was going to give me a cookie and because they really want videos. It's actually text that gets the most traffic and high quality content because people are more likely, I guess, as busy, busy, busy professionals to read something than to stop what they're doing and watch a video, which I, I thought was interesting. Um, the next, and the difference between the high, low quality and high quality content really happens at stage two. So stage one, first initial categorization of your content. Set stage two, your content rolls out to a small percentage of your um, of your your people, right? So it's, you know we'll, we'll say it's ten percent. And this, uh, I was reading a blog the other day. They were for they referred to it as um, golden hour, right? So this is your golden hour. You have an hour where LinkedIn is basically going to look at this peer review and see how people engage, which is likes, comments, um, and shares. So if it was currency, you know, likes are one, you know, one point. Comments are two, shares are three. Um, you can't post and then disappear because because during golden hour, you can't like face post and ghost, which I loved um, because you want to be continuing the conversation because that first hour is pretty much going to determine the lifespan of your post, whether it dies right there or if it's going to continue on for um, another two weeks, right? Um, from there, it goes into a, um, it, the, an actual human at LinkedIn will look at it and say, and say, okay, this is good. We're going to make this go viral, which doesn't always mean like a million views, but we're going to make sure everybody sees it or they can recategorize it based on, um, I hope I don't get you in trouble with this. Keep um, going. Or they can recategorize it um, based on how they, how they see it. Now the algorithm is not, okay. Our algorithm is not an idiot. I'm jumping around here. One more thing on the peer review. Uh, peer review, that golden hour peer review where you want to get as many likes and comments as possible, it doesn't work if people are not online. Um, depending on what your focus is. So if you're B2C, Monday mornings are the best times to post. If you're B2B, Wednesday mornings from 8 to 10 a.m. is the best time to post. If you're general, clear, you know, you don't, you don't need to like whatever, you know, you know, like you, you can feel pretty comfortable without too many, like without any scaries. Um, 
Monday through Friday between eight and eleven a.m. You know, you look at the you look at the transitional times um, there, and that's another thing that you could easily look at, um, which is when is the best time to post on social media? They will tell you, do not post when people are not going to be there to see it because that first hour, it's gonna fall flat and it's gonna be a big waste of time. People are gonna miss your message. Um, now, things that you can do that will make it, now, okay, now going back, jumping back to where I was, the algorithm is not dumb, right? It knows what's happening. When you are posting the same automated content that everybody else, that 100,000, 10,000, 1,000 other advisors or people are posting, same link, same text, it's, they know, you know what I mean? Like they don't, they, they're not like oblivious to it. And they're, that's automatically gonna put you in the spam folder. This automated content does not work. Nobody sees it. It doesn't do the things like, asking questions that get people to be engaged. It doesn't have the personal touch. It's sending people to these like th like third party articles and links about the jargon that nobody wants to read about. Um, that's not good. The second thing is that links in general, I just really important thing about the algorithm to know is be careful with links. First and foremost, these social media platforms are revenue generating companies, right? They don't, this isn't a nonprofit. And the way that they make money is when people are spending ad dollars on their platform, right? People will only spend ad dollars on Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever, for as long as those advertisements work. And if people do not see the advertisements, the advertisements don't work, people don't spend money. When you post a link, what you are telling LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever, is that you don't want their ads to work and that you're going to see because and you want to send them somewhere else. You're giving people opportunities to opt out of their platform and then make the most of somebody else's ad dollars on Google or YouTube or whatever it is. If you have to post a link, post your link in the comments right now. I'm apprehensive to say this because I think I'm going to I'm afraid I'm going to jinx it for the past year or so. I picked up a hack that if you post and then you post it without a link and then you edit the link in, the algorithm misses it and you and you don't get punished. Um, but I've been, I've been knocking on wood on that one for, uh, like I said, a year now. So just don't do links. And if you have to put them in the comments, um, they want, so your YouTube videos, uh, social media isn't, Specifically, LinkedIn is probably not going to be the best place to share the YouTube link for the blog that you're trying to grow. So all of that, those were the five things. <laughs> Somewhere in there, there are one, two, three, four, five that, that are more than half the battle that I mentioned. That yeah, I appreciate no, I appreciate you sharing that. Absolutely. Like that's the stuff that people want to hear. It's the stuff with substance. And it's it's it is real that they are revenue platforms, that they there are rules to follow. And it's something that you know, I think we try to say authenticity, post whenever you want, get more out there. But like I said, there are things that work a little bit that you're mentioning, the actionable strategy, the jump cut, the things that can that can at least help you excel rather than you just sitting there and depending on your own personality to break through the internet. So I, I love sharing this kind of stuff because you know anybody appreciates any kind of help that they can get. So I just like to share good information that people can use to excel their businesses. That's something that I think that you just did. So I appreciate it. Do you guys already have someone to talk about that stuff? I mean, look, we haven't no, been able not to, to that, dig not in. to that yeah. detail and that extent, not at all. No. Okay, that's good. Good. Yeah. I don't know. I, I one thing that just continues to drive us all nuts is that we know this soil is not going to be fruitful forever in on LinkedIn. Like it's going to turn into the others, and uh, ignoring this opportunity is going to cost a lot of people or cause a lot of people that regret of shit. I wished I'd taken more advantage of. Yeah, what does Gary Vee say? Yeah, same yeah, thing, it's, right? It's the this is where Facebook was in 2005. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, in terms of anyone else hear that sound? Oh, yeah, maybe that's your office. I'm guessing that's who's referring Let's get to. Some These comments are late too, Kristen. a little bit, so it could have been something yeah. a while ago. Yeah, um, let's see. If you guys you have, have questions, questions for Kristen, let's get them in. Yeah. Oh, here, here's one. If you wanted to bring it up from Nick, what is next for the Kristen Shea? You teased it a little bit this morning. 
Yeah. There is no the. <laughs> um, On the spot, breaking news. Yeah, so I can't really say too much, but I have never been having more fun in my entire life. I guess if I were to reference what I alluded to this morning, I've been in stealth mode. Um, and I, um, I'm, we're getting to a place where I'm going to be ready. Where we need help from the people. So one, this one's the biggest. Uh, you know, let's skip it because it sounds like I'll, I'll save this one for last. One, if you have experience, um, success stories on social media. Um, I'm writing a book, and I want to feature advisor stories because I am. I will never. I've never been an advisor. I can tell you what works, but an advisor is always going to be able to do a better job of telling you what works in their practice. Um, if you have any. Um, social media success stories, I would love to hear them and um, feature your stories in the book. Two, I'm looking to hire, so if there's anybody on here that is advisor facing, I don't I don't know. Um, looking for A players only, Navy SEALs, let me know. DM me, I'll keep a secret. And then three, um, we're doing some really cool beta testing, which is I think one of the things I'm really the most excited about, like yeah, doing like $250,000 like per campaign minimum for advisors from a social media digital marketing perspective. Um, if you are an advisor who does $7 million, Andrew, I'll answer that in a sec. If you do $7 million a year in annuity business, um, we have a couple of slots for beta testers. It's really high priority. If you're open to signing an NDA, um, DM me. It would be really helpful. I think we have a couple extra. We have a couple of spots left. Um, I guess that kind of tells you a little bit about what's on the horizon. Let me ask you a question you're not going to answer. Is no, it on the wholesale side or the client facing side of the business? Oh, I'm going to be a dog trainer. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't know. Um, <laughs> you do know. <laughs> fair I enough. Right, that's fair. That's fair. Is, first of all, it's kind of it's fun to be in self mode. I'm really in, as the girl who gives my fiance Christmas presents on November 28th. Um, I'm having a really fun time, um, actually keeping a secret. Um, it, it will be advisor facing um, and. What I can say is that it is everything, it is going to be everything that is the opposite of what advisors have been getting from these companies that just keep getting bigger and bigger and are making money off of you and set with you and putting you on this like top advisor success conveyor belt that they can just keep pushing these advisors through and um, or you're wasting a ton of money on and um, eventually create, creating a really cool place that that's, act, that's going to actually be a game changer for your business, but then also um, do some pretty cool like bucket list type things along the way. We're excited. Cool. That's exciting. I'm excited to watch it unravel and to see how you do this. Like I said, I appreciate. Uh, I always appreciate your storytelling. So to see this, to see this happen, I love the website. Just, just work with Kristen. Uh, so it's it's cool how you're doing this, I and mean, I'm excited to see it play out. Now, I think everybody here could have a certain answer for this, but I would like you to answer it, uh, Kristen, since we have you here. So Andrew asks. So the canned LinkedIn content that your firm provides is pretty much worthless and a waste of time for everyone. If so. How do firms not know this? Uh, so this is a fun question. I really appreciate you asking. Um, I don't want to say anything bad about anybody. I don't want to say, well, it's because they're this. Like, I, I don't, you know, I think it's one of the things that I alluded to that the people, these companies just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Like you, everyone's merged so many acquisitions. There's a lot of consolidation in the industry right now, especially over the past couple of years. Um, we just saw a big, um, and I'm very excited about it. Very like big kudos, but we just saw another, another merger between some big companies in the marketing space. Um, and I don't blame them, but the, Let's not beat around the bush. At the top, I don't. You're pandering. No, right. I don't. 
I think there's a disconnect where when you're just, it's the same thing. It's like, you're just trying to, you're just trying to move people through advisor needs a digital marketing solution. Here you go. Here's your automated content next. Like you're, you're not, it's the easiest, fastest way to scale cheapest, cheapest for the firm does not always mean best for the advisor. Easiest for the advisor or the firm does not always mean best for the advisor period. Um, and the other thing is our, our industry, for the most part, when you look at the experts, I mean, the head of your firm at a broker dealer or, or whatever it is, an RIA, they don't know about digital marketing. It sounds great to them. Like it's a great, it's probably when they heard it, it's this probably the same thing that most advisors here that have never like, never like studied social media. They're like social media compliance friendly check. Like, and that's great. You know, I mean, uh, well, let's play it out, Kristen, like in real time here. What's the incentive to the person at the top or and and his or her C-suite to make any global changes to their to what they allow advisors to do if the revenue continues to generate? There's no incentive for the, the top five people to push down and say, we're going to make this place more authentic and we're going to break down some of these rules and we're going to take on more risk and we're going to you know, tell our compliance people to be uh, more liberal with what they do the conversations they're having. There's no incentive for anyone at the top to do that. Innovation is not scalable. That's, that's exactly a slow right. moving world by itself. Like to think that when innovation there is almost yeah, unheard of, which is why I think some of the reason like a lot of marketing companies exist of pushing advisors to think outside the box and be different because that box everybody ends up in is, is check in the box and they pass down check in the box to you. And then you keep your check in the box mindset. And like you said, sharing sharing the article just to say now I'm on social media, um, I think is 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 years old at this point and, and not working. And something I also want to touch on for you is how do you feel about not posting nothing at all or not posting anything if uh, if that's all that you have is the third party articles? Yeah. So let's talk about solutions, right? Um, uh, with 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 the with that content. What I would do if you're already spending money on it, or if it's something that you have and you don't have any other choice, take the time to look at that content ahead of time and just word or summarize it or add your own personal touch to it and allow it to still be automated, but personalize it in some way if you're stuck there. Um, even better, save your money and hire a digital marketing expert, a freelancer, like what I posted about a couple of weeks ago on Upwork or Fiverr, that they can do it for you, but they actually know social media and they're an individual that is flexible and scalable. And, you know, like they can move around and make things happen for you on a dime and build something that actually represents you and your business and is not using some template that 20,000 other advisors are using. Sean, I am... Um, I you got to say it. You'd rather see him not post. I'd rather see him not post. I'd, I'd, I'd rather have one post a year from something that is just spilling out of you. You can't keep it inside than a year's worth of like. Wah, 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 wah. Yep. I totally agree. And you don't post for the sake of posting. That was the best. That was a, You don't post just for the sake of posting. One of the best pieces of advice also came from, um, uh, Lisa Jacobs, where she said, I, I had a, I had my first post go viral. It got, it said like, uh, last April, I got like 150,000 views. And I was like, what do I do next? You know what I mean? Like, I just went viral. This next thing has to be good. And the thing that she told me that I live by now, and it, it has been, it's been a great way to pump the brakes is you don't post anything until you have something that is just spilling out of you, just like that Ken Fisher video was. You don't post for the sake of posting because then you lose the authenticity. Like when there's something you have to say, say it. But if you're like trying to fit a school, like you're like forcing yourself to talk about something you don't really care about, or, you know, you're like, uh, I have to say something. So I guess I'm going to say this, like, just don't. That's a really good point. And I like that because me personally have been in this mindset of like, I have to post more and I have to be out there. And I find myself staring at my phone and being like, I thought I had something to say, or I feel like I should post right now, but it's not that it's not that time. And recently I've just been putting it back and be like, like, what am I doing? I'm not even doing any work right now. I was just staring at it, thinking of, and I didn't have an idea. I just felt like I want to be present or be here, but 
it would have been a less authentic message to push it out and just say something random. And that's what I've been pulling myself back to actually say that maybe posting three or four times a day isn't necessary if you don't have three or four things to say. So I, I'm, I'm fine now, you know, doing the show, letting it resonate, letting something build up that I really care about. So it comes out like this, you know, rather than sitting in front of a phone and staring at it and being like, okay, here it comes. Like, I'm going to get it. You know, that, 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 that fire's coming and it just never does, you know, fire, fire comes when it comes. Yeah. What does C do, Jonathan? <clears throat> yeah, that's a good question. I was, uh, I, I imagine this is something he did, but I'm, con I'm, I'm super interested. I'm going to have, I'm going to have to pause this entire show and jump on Google I just know. because I have to know what C do is. I can't continue until that. Sounds like he's yeah winterizing a, a a jet ski while people are losing money and the the, the two were uh, not in conjunction with uh, his client base maybe yeah well anyways Kristen I I I'm you guys can continue the conversation I hate to have to do this I told my wife that I would help her at ten thirty you're um, I'm inspired by what you do I think the way you market um, the spark the energy the aut authenticity you bring. I'm a big fan of, and it was a pleasure to meet you. And I'm excited to continue to follow you and follow your journey and, and be a fan of yours. So thank you for taking an hour this morning to jump on with us. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really like you guys. I think you guys are awesome and I really appreciate it. And I look forward to continuing to collaborate and work together. Awesome. Appreciate yeah, you. Um, and if there's, if there's anything you want to leave people with, Kristen, I was going to leave it right there. I appreciate, and again, all the advice that you shared, everything. I think we're all going to be excited to watch how, how you unravel and the business that you're going to provide and the value. Obviously, you're extremely smart. You have high energy. And I think that people can learn from you and grab from your optimism and realize how far it can take you. I can tell that you're, I guess, what some people would call you know, bubbly is just your constant optimism where I think a lot of us are a little bit more pessimistic than we have to judging ourselves when we should it and things like that. And I can tell that, you know, positivity radiates through you, even through the internet. So I'm excited to see where this goes and just appreciate the last hour of your time for us helping our audience. So thanks so much. Absolutely. I appreciate you guys. And Jonathan, I'll, um, I'll message you, just put a bow on it. And I appreciate you guys. Happy Wednesday. Take it easy. Jet ski. Bye, Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. See you, Keith, Tony, Mario, Andrew, Jonathan. Appreciate you guys sticking around and commenting. Thanks so much. And uh, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. You know, I will, I'll tag Kristen above. I did it in my last post, but I'll tag her above. So obviously you can click there, jump over if you want to talk to Kristen or message her, um, you know, where to reach her. She's already here on LinkedIn. She's all over the place. So Thanks again for sticking around, guys. Awesome show, and we'll see you tomorrow. And I want to announce, I forgot, I meant to say this before, we are having Mitch Mitch Goldberg on on Friday. So I'm super excited to have Mitch on. Mitch is an awesome, uh, awesome financial advisor that uh, we actually brought on as a special guest when we had uh, Anthony and Keith. So it'll be fun. If anybody who stuck around, we're going to be talking to Mitch, who goes live um, nearly every day at 4.30 and talks about the market, does a lot of intricate technical stuff that I'm, I'm interested in talking to him about. So um Everybody bring your questions for Mitch and uh, appreciate you being here.